Tactical Situation Display, or TSD, is one of the most powerful tools on board the H-64 Delta. It's also one of the worst things to try to teach on YouTube. Stingray is town six, you're clear to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south to north, left in, right out. The following video is for entertainment purposes only. There will be no specific discussion about ranges, technical data, or aircraft survivability equipment, otherwise known as ASE. Questions of this nature will not be answered, and discussions will be deleted. Thanks. Alright guys, welcome aboard the H-64D, and we're going to take a look at the TSD. Uh, full disclosure, this is probably the third time I've made this video, and uh, it's absolutely boring. Uh, I hate it. I hated editing it, and uh, it was incredibly long because there is so much to cover. So what I think I'm going to try to do is break this down, and we're going to just take this into bite-sized chunks. So uh, just go along with the, uh, the ride here. We're going to turn off our HDU so that we don't have all that stuff in our face. And we're going to focus in on the TSD. And I'm going to freeze my track IR. And uh, we're just going to take a look at the TSD and just some basic, basic functionality. And it will build upon that. So I'm going to turn the video down and the brightness down just a little bit so that we can see uh, a little bit better. Uh, there's a couple functions that I want to talk about on this video. And uh, this is, again, just the very basic functions. Uh, we're going to talk about the pan. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to move my cursor over to the map, and you can see my cursor is over here on the left MPD, uh, and I can't seem to get it over to the right. So what you got to do is double click to the right, and it'll pop up over here. If you want to go to the left, you double click to the left. So we'll bring our cursor over, and one other thing you can do with your cursor, you see that little uh, white X. Uh, you see that white X disappears, and you kind of see the, the words behind it glow. Uh, you can interact with the cursor so we're gonna go ahead and hit pan I'm gonna hit enter on my cursor and now we are in the pan mode so what this is gonna allow us to do is you guessed it we can pan the map so I'm gonna move the cursor and you can see that the map is moving around you can also see that we've gone into freeze mode uh, meaning that the, the you know the map is frozen uh, and that'll make more sense here in a moment all right if we uh, pan somewhere we want to let's say we're interested in what's going on over here uh, we can turn the pan mode uh, back to normal and now I have my cursor back uh, which allows me to do my favorite thing in the world which is the cursor acquisition so I'm gonna turn off pan and you can see that we're still frozen and you see this button right here CAC I'm gonna hit the cursor acquisition button all right so we're in cursor acquisition mode I'm gonna move my cursor somewhere interesting and I'm gonna hit the cursor enter button and you can see it just dropped a point that says PLT so that's for pilot uh, the CPG can do the same thing from his position, and it will drop a point that says CPG. Now, what this is going to do is essentially create a target point. So this is now target 5-5, five, five, and the CPG can drop target 5-6. Uh, if I move this to another spot, so I'm going to hit CAC, and let's change my CAC to over here. Now that is target 5-5, five, five, and that's going to be updated in the system. It's something you can use as an acquisition point. It's also something that you can set a direct waypoint to. Uh, so this is very, uh, very useful uh, for sharing information between the uh, the front seater and the back seater. They're able to see all these things happening uh, in real time on their map. All right, so let's go back to the pan. Uh, we're back in cursor. Some other functions we can do. Uh, we can go to a specific point. So let's go ahead and I'm going to unfreeze my track IR, and I'm going to hit point. I'm going to look over at the keyboard unit. You see it's it's ready for uh, receiving information. I'm going to put in whiskey 01. Enter. And you can see that it panned automatically to waypoint 01. Uh, over here on the left, you'll also see route. Uh, I can uh, zip between the route points uh, just by pressing up and down on the route, and it will move to those next points. All right, if I'm done with the pan, I can just turn off pan and turn off freeze, and it'll bring the map right back to my own ship, uh, which is uh, off-centered. I can hit this button here on the right, and that will center the map. Uh, typically, I like to fly with it off-center. I like to have a little bit more uh, essay about what's going on in front of me. All right, continuing with the other basic uh, information for the TSD, we're going to hit the uh, instrument button here, and this is going to bring up a timer we can use for instrument flying. Uh, it's automatically going to bring up our HSI. We can hit center once again and bring that up to the center. We can also uh, input with our keypad a heading, which will move the caret. So I'll go ahead once again and unhook my track IR. 
and we'll type in a heading of let's say 150 enter and you can see that carrot moved up to the 150 and it's kind of hard to see we'll go to center but you can see the back azimuth uh, right there at uh, 330 now from the instrument page or from the main TSD page we have this button called map uh, so I'm going to go back to main TSD just to show you that it's down here at the bottom and then instruments it's up here at the top but we'll go ahead and hit map let me freeze my track IR again and uh, we've got all kinds of things that we can do to change the map so uh, over here we've got charts uh, we can change to digital we can change to satellite We can change to stick, which just shows uh, points that we have in the system, so our route and our uh, cursor acquisition point. And we'll go back to chart. Of course, we can change all our different scales. Uh, color banding and uh, slope shade is uh, not operational at this time. At least if it is, it's not working for me. Uh, but color banding just basically shows uh, elevation color. Uh, depending on if you've got it set to aircraft or to elevation. If you've got it set to aircraft, then elevation uh, or terrain that's above the aircraft's altitude will be shown in red, and anything within 50 feet below will be shown in yellow. All right, you can change the orientation of your map to uh, track up, heading up, or north up, uh, which puts the top of the map uh, situated to, to face the north. Now, the view button is not operational for this build. And you can see up here as we change the scale, we've got these grid lines here that are going to change in scale as well. They're kind of hard to see, but you got a grid line here and here, and that's representing five kilometers. We can turn those grid lines off as well. All right, the last thing I want to show you in this video is the show pages. So we're going to hit show page. Uh, this is a huge rabbit hole. We're not going to go all the way down it because uh, it would take probably about an hour. Uh, but we're going to just uh, kind of go through what some of the basics are here. We're in the navigation phase. And you can see here that we've got uh, some options that have arrived. Uh, we hit waypoint data. That's going to take away this box here. And that's letting us know this is the waypoint that we are currently heading to. Waypoint 01, 2.1 kilometers. Inactive zones and obstacles have to do with FCR data. So we'll ignore that. CPG cursor will allow the CPG's cursor to move around just like ours. And we can see it. And that's also helpful for passing information between uh, cockpit seats. Uh, if we hit the cursor information, it brings up this uh, window down here where we can... Uh, move our cursor around. It's going to give us the grid, the altitude, and the distance from our aircraft. Over here, we can bring up the HSI. Over here, we've got our endurance window based on our fuel burn and our wind data based on the sensors for the aircraft. Now, we do have some other options up here, threat show and coordinate show. Uh, these I'm not really going to get into right now because it's kind of a little bit more in-depth. And like I said, I don't want this video to take uh, ages. So we'll just save that for the future. But I will show you the next phase, which is attack phase. And you can see that it's basically the same, a lot of the same options. However, we do have one that I want to highlight, which is current route. So if we hit current route, it's going to bring up that navigation data that we've basically turned off by going to the attack phase. So let me turn that back off. We'll go back to nav phase. You can see that we've got this uh, the route showing. And we'll go to attack and it disappears. So if you want to keep that on your attack phase, uh, it just hit current route and that'll pop back up for you. All right, one more thing I think I can slip in on this video is uh, present position. So if we hit the PP button, we've got the present position box that's going to show up. And this is exactly that, our present position. So this is our grid. This is our lat long. And this is the ground elevation below us. All right, guys, that's enough for this video. We'll uh, continue and expand on the navigation side of it yeah, in the next video. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll talk to you later.